people would have no problem being convinced by it. But as soon as you bring God into the picture, or Islam into the picture, or religion into the picture, ah, now, suddenly, it can't be true. Now the excuses come in. Now the flawed rationale comes in. Now the, uh, the, the debunking of evidence comes in, in the most flimsiest of ways. And I think that's a, that's a human trait that we all have. You know? Yeah, but that can work both ways. You can use the same argument, so you believe because yes. of the stuff. You ignore the problems, ignore the yes. things that should otherwise disprove this stuff because you want to believe. I agree, that so can happen. It can, it can work both ways. Yes, of course it can. You're absolutely right. It can work both ways. But, you know, that is why the Quran says, if you speak the truth, provide your evidence. You provide your evidence, I provide my evidence, and upon the evidence, we go wherever the evidence takes us. So, it doesn't say believe just because it's from God, you have to believe it, no. Allah says, if you're truthful, provide your evidence. Say what it is that you wish to say. And let's, let's base our opinion upon not our predispositions, not our hunches, not our love for something or our hatred for something, but upon the evidence. I would accept that. Okay, I'll give you an argument against any God anyway. Sorry? I'll give you my main argument against any God, and if you go against the religion, any yes. not one God, religion. Yes. If there's a God yes. who's going to burn us in hell and not worship him. Yes. Burn us in hell, this is no serious. Yes. He's not going to send one God to one part of the world. Yes. He's going to send thousands of prophets all over the world. Yes. Are they going to succeed? Yes. Islam, all yes. other religion. Come closer, come closer. Out. What's your name? Chris. Chris. All the religions. Nice to meet you, Chris. Ruff, come, come closer. You don't. You can be part of the part of the talk, the discussion. All religions. Yes. They all disagree with each other. Yes. But they do not agree. And they should do. Yes. The basics at least. The basic yes. part. Yes. Because there should be thousands of prophets all succeeding, setting the same basic message. The Islam is very simple. It's one God, yes. heaven, hell, resurrection. Yes. Very simple. Yes. That should be universal. Yes. So if people tell down the world, they should find the same religion. Yes. They don't. So that's your reason, re reason for denying God? Is that what you're saying? That's my main argument for denying any particular religion. Let me ask you something. Because this is what we believe. And I want to ask you whether this is a possibility or whether it's an impossibility. Could it be that the narrative in Islam, which is Allah says, we do not punish a people until we send them a warner. Hold on, hold on, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. So we believe that Allah sent a warner to every people everywhere around the world. Now could it be that human beings, because unfortunately they are inherently corrupt, have changed those messages and Allah then sent down another warner to correct the mistakes that were being made. And they then themselves through their corruption, through their deception, through their greed, through lies or whatever, again, change that message. So Allah then once again sent out down another messenger. Now in Islam, this is what no. we believe. This is what we believe. What, what, why is that not possible? Because God's smarter than we are. That's not, that's not what I asked you. He, no, he would not choose prophets who are going to fail. He would choose people who could, and with his help, would succeed. He would not sense failure. But you're now applying your yes. reasoning. No, no, this is no, but hold on a second. This is the perfect God. No, 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 hold on a second. This is the God that burn yes, people yes. in hell. But you are applying... No. What, hold on a second. This is basic logic. No, it's not. It's basic logic to you. Yes. Right. It is not empirical, analytical, uh, and without, uh, uh, you know, without uh, your own take on your subjective reasoning. Hold on a second. It's your subjective reasoning that tells you that this is how God should have done something. If he's going to burn us in hell, he's going to burn us in hell. Hold on a second, hold on a second. He's going to burn hold in hell. Fire! Are you going to tell me, oh, all these okay, failed prophets failed. All these prophets failed. So why don't you calm down? Why would they why, fail? Why, why don't you calm down? And let's, no, have no. A, 
You're right, of course. Let's have a look, because... Why would they gen fail? Generally... Because ge generally, God would know how to not fail. Look, my point... He would get it right. My point to you is this. He would not my, fail. My, my point to you is this. You're, like, you're telling me God's failed. No, I'm not saying yes, that to you. you. No. What I'm saying to you is this. You are applying your reasoning... Yes, reason. Hold on a second. Your subjective reasoning yes. as to what you feel was the best way yes. to send down this message. Yes. Now, I'm telling you that we believe in the Quran, which we hold on a second, which tells us that God sent a warner to all people. Yes, yes, yes. And it's the inherent corrupt nature of human beings. Well, and, and that is where the choice lies. No. That is where the choice lies. This is a the terribly weak excuse. It's no. a terribly weak excuse. No, it's not a weak it's, it's no. excuse. It's a terribly no. weak excuse. Well, look, excuse. The, the reality is this. You can apply strength and weakness to something subjectively right, as you please. Right. No, hold on a second. But it does not make it inherently weak or strong because you say so or I say so. Right? Number two, we believe that Allah says that He placed within every heart a fitra, a conscience, to recognize the Creator. That is why. So that's why it's hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. It's not God that fails. Yes, it is. It's it's is, it, is it is. It is. We. It is. It is we. It is. It is we. Are good. Well, most people are good. We believe that this fitra, this most conscience. Evil, most are good. We believe. Why, why does it fail with the good people? We believe. Why don't the good people believe. Okay. We believe that this fitra, this conscience. Even if, you're, even if you're an atheist, no, listen to what I'm saying first. Look, if you don't hear what I'm saying... No, no, you haven't heard me yet. This inherent conscience that we have within our hearts guides us even if no message reaches us. As to, if I kill that animal and cause it pain, that's probably a bad thing to do. If I kill my brother for his goat, it's probably a bad thing to do. Nobody has to teach us that. There's something inherent within us. There's something inherent within us that tells us that that is wrong. And that is the fitra that we believe that Allah places in every heart. Now, if you as a human being, hold on a second. If you as a human being now super uh, impose your own greed and your own desires, hold on a second, or your arrogance, to 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 uh, go uh, to to fight against that fitra, that conscience, and then you do bad things. Don't blame God. Blame yourself. I always blame myself. I do bad. Right. I always blame myself. That's what we should do. I do not blame anybody else. That's what we should do. It's me. But I can have empathy. I can understand other people's pain. It's part of my mind. I You're a sensitive, sensitive person. That's why I know I hurt somebody else. I feel bad about it. Yes. Because I don't understand it. Where does that come from? My ability to understand. Where does that come from? My brain. Your brain. So it's a physical manifestation of ethics and morals yeah. from, uh, from matter in your brain. That's what brain is. Okay. So consciousness and that ability to decipher good and evil or good and bad, you're saying it's just a physical component of your brain? Yes, that's how the brain works. Okay. Consciousness is something that is widely and hugely debated today. Yeah. You're claiming it comes from a, from a physical manifestation of, we of matter. Some, we have some of the billion neurons in our brains. The only reason they're there is because that's how the brain works. If you damage the brain physically, you damage the mind. Right, so... If you take drink and so drugs, you damage the mind. What benefit... Whatever you do, yes. the effects this, how this works, yes. damages the mind. So what benefit is there from a, a point of view of just matter yeah. to be kind or just or fair to anybody? What's the point? Because it helps us survive. Well, how, how does it help you survive? Because they, what to be doing? unkind, if I, if, nice I, if, I, if I if I pick nice his... to other people, other yes. people are nice to me. Right. If they don't work together, my chance of survival in a very harsh world, yes. I include. Well, so if I, for example, commit mass fraud, steal £10 million from the government and go and spend the rest of my life in the Bahamas, is that wrong? Yes. Why? Because you hurt the evidence of other people. Sorry? You hurt the majority. Well, how? Because you've heard taking their money. Yeah, but the, wh where is what I'm trying to say to you is what I'm trying to say to you is that that inherent belief of good, of doing good, and not hurting people, 
There's, there's no survival of the fittest. It does not. Survive. Survi no, it doesn't. It does. No, not at all. I that helps him survive. No, no, yeah, it helps me it, survive. Individuals, parasites. You know, yes, people would get away with it. People do get away with it. I could end up with a hundred women and have ten thousand kids, generally, right? With generally, all that money. Generally, for most of society, right? we need to cooperate for society to survive to work. And some people abuse that. My, 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 po my, my point to you is this, though. But the majority don't. But my point to you. But, but my point did, to you. But you see, my point the to you. Majority have to cooperate. My, my, my point. My, society's work. Right. My, my point to you is this, though. Some people get away with doing that. My point to you is that to have that notion of survival and reproduction. If I take a huge amount of money from the government, yeah. steal it, yeah. go and procreate and have lots and lots of kids. My genes get passed on. I have lots of kids. That sounds like survival. That's survival of the fittest. But okay, a, a, a kind that will stop to find out whether your neighbour is but hungry. You have to look after your children. If you don't look after them, they die. You have to look. You have to essentially look after your own. Group. Look, reality is we're moving into many different areas, yeah, okay. which are which are useless, right? The issue, the main issue here, is this. Your point was that you feel because God did not send a prophet. And for each nation, that message was not preserved. Yeah. That means God has failed. Yes. And what if failure and success are in relation to the one who is conducting that activity and how they assess failure or success? Not how you or I attribute failure or success. God's success was to send the warner. And God's success was to give, hold on a second, God being successful was to give free will to those people to do whatever they want after they received the warner. That, in God's eyes, is success. Except now, in your eyes, it might no, not be. But that's not a reason to no. deny God. There is no evidence these warners ever, ever existed. There's a lot of evidence. There's no evidence that ever existed. There's a lot of evidence. No, there is not. There's, there's lots of evidence. There's nothing. There's, there's lots of people going around sending people pockets or contradicting each other. Sending different messages in different countries and different parts of the world, we do not get evidence for the same people as prophets saying the same basic message. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If I was your neighbour, one morning I wake up and I say, I'm a prophet of God. Believe me, don't eat swine anymore, don't drink alcohol anymore, don't gamble anymore. Uh, get married before you have relationships. Fast in the month of Ramadan. You have to go Hajj at least once in a year. What would you say to me? Yes. You'd say, Are you crazy, man? Right. Nobody would follow me, would they? Nobody would, right? Nobody would, right? Right. So clearly, those people that came down with the message they came down to have millions of followers. There must have been something pretty special that they came down with to convince all of these people. And not only, and hold on a second, not only the people of that time, not only the people of that time, but for generations to come, including academics, including you know doctors and surgeons and scientists, convinced by that message, by that man 14 centuries ago. It must that's, have been pretty special, right? That's also true of Hinduism, Buddhism, yes. Christianity. I agree. You think Christians are going to burn in health eternity? Who? Christians. Who, be who believes that? Christians are going to die. No, it Anyone who thinks that Jesus is the Son of God yes. will burn in hell for no. eternity. Anyone who that's what the Quran says. It says anybody who commits the act of shirk, yeah, which is, the however, the scholars, however, the scholars say that this aspect of shirk, the depth of it, the, the, uh, and what is in people's hearts? In Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We, look, when you start talking about my religion, when you don't know, at least have the intellectual respect of asking me what I believe or what the scholarly opinion of something is. Because, for example, because okay, it's in the Quran that you can't eat swine. Can I eat swine? Egypt, I shall call. No. Religiously, re am, I, am I allowed to eat swine ever? If you're going to starve to death, yes. Is that in the Quran? Yes. No, it's not. It says if you're going to fit. It's something about if you're going to starvation. That's in the Sunnah. You can. That's in the Hadith. No, no, it's in the Quran. The, the Hadith, hadith, hadith says if for three days and three nights, 
you haven't had any food and you need to survive, you may consume that amount that will allow you to survive. Hold on a second. So, does the Quran say that we have to pray? Does it say how we have to pray? No. Well, that comes from the Hadith, the example of the Prophet. So you see, in Islam, the Quran is from God. We accept that, the literal word of God. How we interpret the Quran is through the eyes of the Prophet Wasallam, his understanding given to him by God. And of course, how the scholars will look at what Prophet Muhammad did and said, and how that then transpires and how we should behave, how what we should do. It's not just because we find a line in the Quran that we take it with the literalism because it may be specific, it may be time specific, it may be nation specific. It might not apply in that way to all nations or all people. It may be very specific about a particular people. Okay. So that's how we interpret the Quran. But my point to you was this, look, you say that Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, we don't regard that these religions did not get messengers. So Hinduism in its core teachings, in the oldest scriptures, the Vedas, it says God is one, God is absolute, God is eternal, there is no statue or no likeness of God, which is very similar to what the Quran says about God. Now, what, what has manifested in their actions after that is that they've made statues. They've made these different gods. But in their core teachings, it doesn't say that. So to me, hold on a second. To me, it sounds very like that they may well have had a messenger who told them God is one, God is absolute, that there is no likeness or statue of God and to worship nothing other than God. Uh, you know, many of the practices of Buddhism, for example, of deep meditation, of connection to, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say to you is... No, that's not... My point is not that. My, my point to you is this, that the, even the Christian, even the one who believes in the Trinity, he still says, I believe in one God doesn't he yeah. or she they don't say I believe in three gods they, they now they find a way through linguistic gymnastics to make those three fit into one but they still claim that they worship one God because they know to worship three would be blasphemous the Jew his first commandment oh Israel your Lord your God is one for the Muslim La ilaha illallah. There is no deity. There is nothing worthy of worship except the one and true God. That's it. Yes, but then, These are the same messages. Yes, but Islam says it comes from Judaism, Christianity, Islam. No, they're connected. No, no it, it, it world, comes. We believe that all of the faiths in their original form. Yeah, hold on a second. It's still all, that problem of the original form. We have no, no evidence for that original form. But we, we, but we do. I'll tell you why we do. I'll tell you why we do. Whenever anybody makes a claim, we send down warners. We send down messengers. We taught the people that which they did not know. Uh, you know, we taught them that God was one. God was absolute. Uh, they transgressed. They, 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 they join partners with God. When, when anybody makes those claims, the first thing that you must do as a rational human being is validate the claim. Hold on a second. You validate the claim, don't you? Right, so what you do, what you do is you say, okay, this Quran claims that it's from God. What's the evidence? It's a fair question. You know, the Quran claims to be a miracle. What's the evidence to say that this is a miracle? It's a fair question. Now, being born in this country, you get to adolescence, you're 15, 16 or whatever, and you do ask these questions that, look, my parents tell me that this is from God. They say it's a miracle of God. Why should I really believe it if I'm not convinced by the evidence? I believe that the Quran has a multifaceted evidential 
a process that a logical, rational human being can look at and can come to a conclusion, even if he or she does not accept it and adhere to it, that this book could not...